Hi, once again, guys. Uh, today's lesson is over converting a fraction into a decimal. Now, before I begin anything, I'm going to review something that we've learned in class and something that you've seen in uh, one of my videos before. I need to make sure you understand this portion first before we move on. So let's talk money. Money, we know money pretty well. If I ask you how much do I have, what would you say? You'd say I have a dollar. If I ask you here, how much do I have, you'd still say one dollar. So I'm going to write it one more time. If I ask you how much I have, you would say I still have one dollar. So my point here, boys and girls, is that if you look at the whole number, I have one whole. Over here, my whole number is one whole. I have zero change. Over here, I have one whole dollar with zero change. Just because I add the decimal and the zeros, does that mean that I'm changing the value? No. All I did was change the weight. Adding zeros to the end of a decimal only changes the way it looks. It does not change the way, uh, I'm sorry, it does not change the value, just the way it looks. So here, this picture here shows a, a woman with her hair, you know, it's long, it's down, and then they show her with her hair up. Does that change who she is? No, it just changes the way she looks. It's still the same person. Okay, in the same way, guys, with money, I have a dollar here, I have a dollar here, and I still have a dollar there. All we did was change the way it looks. So I hope you understand that little concept now that we're going to get into turning fractions into decimals. Still in the topic of money, all right? I like to always begin with stuff that you're you're aware of, things that you know. In terms of money, if someone gives you one half of a dollar, you automatically know that you're going to get 50 cents. That's one half of a dollar. But have you ever wondered how you can turn this fraction into a decimal? Well, that is what we're going to do. To turn a fraction into a decimal, guys, we're always going to divide okay keep that in mind to turn a fraction into a decimal we're going to divide okay parts of a fraction let's talk about that we have the numerator and the denominator all right when we divide I'm gonna give you this example I'm gonna divide here's my division sign numerator starts with an N it goes on the N side so in this case I'm gonna drag the number one on the inside and the denominator which is 2 it's gonna go on the outside alright what am I turning it into I'm turning this fraction into a decimal so guys I have to have a decimal here I'm gonna line up my dot a decimal it must be lined up now the numerator was 1 okay if I put zeros at the end of a decimal am I changing the value nope I'm just look changing the way it looks all right, so I'm turning it into a decimal. Let's ignore the decimal. Now that we have the decimal right here, okay, you can ignore it. Let's pretend the decimal's not there. Let's start dividing. Two can go into one, zero times, that's too small. Remember, ignore the decimal. What number does it look like now? Ten. Two can go into ten, five times. And two times five is ten. 10 minus 10 is 0. I can bring down the other 0. 2 can go into 0, 0 times. And uh, you can add as many zeros as you want, guys. It doesn't matter. It's not going to change the value. And that is how we turn a fraction into a decimal. We're going we're gonna to continue to divide. All right, let's do a few more problems. All right, let's go ahead and turn 1 fifth into a decimal. Well, don't forget, guys we're going to divide. Alright, so as we mentioned earlier, numerator starts with an N, it goes on the inside. Denominator goes on the outside. I'm turning, I'm turning this into a what? 
I'm turning it into a decimal. So don't forget to put your decimal, line it up. All right, so the, my number, my numerator was 1. Okay, if I add zeros at the end, it is still one whole. All right, let's go ahead and continue dividing. Remember, guys, now that your decimals are lined up, you can ignore it. 5 can go into 1, 0 times. 5 can go into 10, 2 times. And 5 times 2, I'm sorry, I meant to put a subtraction sign. 5 times 2 is 10, 10 minus 10 is 0. So do I need these extra zeros? No, I don't have to have them. Okay, so my answer is 2 tenths. All right, let's try another one. Let's go with 2 fifths. All right, I need to turn this fraction into a decimal. The rule is never going to change. Okay, numerator starts with an N, it goes on the inside. Denominator goes on the outside. I'm turning it into a what? A decimal. So I need to see a decimal. Line it up, one on top of the other. And then you can add as many zeros as you want. You don't always have to add zeros, but I like to add zeros just to stay on the safe side. Did I change the number two? No, I did not. I just changed the way it looks. Remember the picture of the girl with her hair down? If she did her hair up, it didn't change who she was. It just changed the way she looked. All right, let's continue with the division. 5 can go into 2, 0. That's too small. Let's look at the bigger number. 5 can go into 20, 4 times. 20 minus 20 is 0. Do I need these extra zeros that I added? No. So my answer is 4 tenths. Now let's try a longer one. Let's convert 5 eighths into a decimal. Again guys, rules never ever change. They're going to stay the same. We're still going to divide. Numerator starts with an N. It goes on the inside. Denominator on the outside. I'm turning it into a what? A decimal. So I need to see decimal decimal. Once you have your decimals, guys, again, just ignore them. Pretend they're not there. Let's add all the zeros in the world. Okay, is my number still 5? Yes, it is. I didn't change it to 50. I didn't change it to 500. I didn't change it to 5,000. I change. It's still the same. It's still 5. Now let's divide. 8 can go into 5 zero times. That's too small. 8 can go into 50. Okay, remember, ignore the decimal. 8 can go into 50 six times. And 8 times 6 is 48. 50 minus 48 is 2. Now, I'm done with the, these two numbers. Okay, I can bring down the 0. 8 can go into 20 two times. 8 times 2 is 16. I have 4 left. Okay, now I have to bring down the next zero. 8 can go into 40 five times. 40 minus 40 is zero. Do I need the zero here? No, I don't need it. It's just extra. Okay, so my answer is zero and 625 thousandths. Here's another one three-fourths. All right, to turn it into a decimal, we're going to divide. Numerator starts with an N. It goes on the inside. Denominator on the outside. I'm turning it into a what? A decimal. So I need to see your decimals. Line them up. All right, and then you can add all the zeros in the world. Okay? All right, let's do the division. Four can go into three, zero. Okay, that's too small. Look at your next number. It looks like 30. 4 can go into 30 seven times. 4 times 7 is 28. 30 minus 28 is 2. Bring down the 0 because you already used these numbers. And 4 can go into 20 five times. 20 minus 20 is 0. All right, guys, do I need this extra 0 that I put on there? No. 
I don't need to use it. Okay, because I have a denom and I'm sorry, a remainder of zero. So my answer is 75 hundredths. Again, guys, think of money in this situation. If you have three out of four quarters, don't you get 75 cents? Yes, you do. Now, speaking of that, let's go ahead and discuss anything that has like one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, and four fourths. Those are real easy fractions. You're going to have to remember these guys because you're going to see them a lot in, in math. Not just in sixth grade, but in following grade levels. Okay, whenever you see the denominator as four, think of quarters. How many quarters do you need to make a dollar? You need four. So if I gave you one out of four quarters, I gave you 25 cents. If I gave you two out of four quarters, I gave you 50 cents. If I give you three out of four quarters, I give you 75 cents. And if I give you four out of four quarters, you get one whole dollar. Okay, so that's one whole. So these are just like benchmark fractions. Those that are pretty easy to memorize. You can do the work, okay, but it's also good to remember these. I'm going to go ahead, since I have not given you this sample, I'm going to go ahead and do it. One fourth. How do you turn a fraction into a decimal? Divide. Numerator starts with an N. It goes on the inside. Denominator on the outside. I'm turning it into a decimal, so I need to see my decimals lined up. And then add all the zeros in the world that you want. 4 can go into 1, 0. 4 can go into 10, 2 times. And 4 can go into 20, 5 times. All right, and I just proved my answer. But like I said, guys, it's a good thing to remember these because they're benchmark fractions. They're, they're, you're going to see them a lot. So now let's do another. We're going to do a couple more. All right, let's turn one-third into a fraction. I'm sorry, into a decimal. Numerator starts with an N. It goes on the inside. Denominator goes on the outside. I'm going to turn it into a decimal, so I need a decimal. Line them up. Put all the zeros in the world. All right, let's do this. Three can go into one, zero. Okay, ignore the decimal, pretend it's not there. Three can go into ten, three times. Ten minus nine is one. Bring down the zero. Three can go into ten, three times. Okay, 3 times 3 is 9. 10 minus 9 is 1. Whoa, I'm seeing a pattern here. 3 can go into 10, 3 times. Guys, am I going to spend the rest of my life fixing this? No. Do you notice that this pattern is never going to stop? So, I can continue and waste my time here, or I can just do this. My answer is 0 and 3 tenths. And this bar that I have on top of the number, that represents a repeating decimal. When you put a bar on top of a decimal, it means that this number is going to repeat itself. In other words, when I, the moment I write this, what it's saying is 0 and 3, 3, 3, 3. It'll go on forever. So instead of writing a long number and going forever, you can just simply put that repeating decimal, that bar, on top. Let's try another one. Let's work with one sixth. Numerator starts with an N, it goes on the inside, denominator on the outside. We're turning it into a decimal, so I want to see the decimal. Line them up. Add all the zeros in the world, you're not changing the value. Alright, let's go. Six can go into one, zero. Ignore the decimal. 6 can go into 10 one time. Okay. 6 can go into 40 six times. And 6 can go into 40 six times. Now, do you see how it's repeating all over again? 
Okay, this is going to be 666. It'll keep going. So instead of wasting my time and your time, let's go ahead and write our answer. It's 0 and 1600. Now, the 6 is what keeps repeating, right? Not the 1. So where am I going to put the, the bar? I'm going to make sure that I put the bar on top of the 6. Okay, so that means 0 0.1. Six, 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 six. It'll continue and it'll keep going. All right. And uh, let's try a couple more just to make sure that you understand it. It's real, real easy. Let's do some where it's an improper fraction. Let's go ahead and try five fourths. Remember, guys, the rules never change. We're going to divide. Okay. Numerator starts with an N, it goes on the inside, denominator on the outside. I'm turning it into a decimal, so I expect to see a decimal. Line them up and put all the zeros in the world. All right, let's begin. Four can go into five one time. Four can go into ten two times. And four can go into twenty five times. Now that I have a remainder of zero, do I need this extra zero? No. So this guys means that five fourths equals one and twenty five hundredths. Okay? Please don't forget, I don't want y'all telling yourselves that the smallest number goes on the inside. That's not true. The numerator, I don't care how big or how small, numerator starts with an N, it goes on the inside. Okay? All right, one more. All right, let's turn this fraction into a decimal. Numerator starts with an N. It goes on the inside. Denominator on the outside. Decimal, decimal. Put all the zeros in the world that you want. All right, two can go into three one time. And two can go into ten five times. All right, I have a remainder of zero. Do I need these extra zeros that I added? No, I don't. So my answer is one and five tenths. Super easy, guys. So please don't forget that when you turn a fraction into a decimal, you divide. Numerator starts with an N. I don't care if it's small or big. The numerator always goes on the inside. Okay, and the denominator goes on the outside. I hope this uh, presentation has helped you and that you make good grades. Okay, any further questions, please feel free to email me and I will be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you.